So in this video, I'm going to show you how I built my very own custom hot wire cutter. This is a great, fun, easy to do DIY project. And at the end, you'll have made a piece of equipment capable of cutting out some pretty cool stuff out of foam. So let's check it out. Hot wire cutters allow you to cut various types of foam into pretty much whatever shape you need. To make cutting internal holes quick and easy, the hot wire can be removed by loosening a wing nut, then simply push the wire through the foam before reattaching it to the tension arm. My design also includes an adjustable fence allowing for quick and repeatable cuts. The temperature of the hot wire is adjustable through the use of a PWM controller. And the cutter is powered by a simple 12 volt wall adapter. When it comes time to put the hot wire cutter into storage, the tension arm is easily removed with only one bolt. The slim design means it can even fit into a shallow tool chest drawer for easy storage. Here we have the raw and elusive mechatronic Neanderthal. To attract a mate, this young single male must construct a functioning circuit. Unfortunately for this young male, he isn't using a custom printed circuit board. So there is only one way this can end. Oh dear. Thankfully this won't happen to you because you can order a custom printed circuit board from JLCPCB. Starting from as little as $2 for 5 PCBs, they have fast production time and offer a wide range of design options and colours to choose from. So why don't you try out JLCPCB for your next project. Check out the links in the video's description for more information on the components I'm using in this build. To construct the hot wire cutter, I'll be using a 2mm sheet of alloy for the base. You can make the base as big or as small as you need. You'll also need nichrome wire, a PWM controller, 12 volt power adapter, a panel mount DC connector that fits your adapter plug, an on off switch, LED resistor and a chrome bezel, a length of 25 by 3 alloy flat bar, 40 by 40 millimeter angle alloy, 20 by 40 V slot rail, and a short length of 20 by 40 wood. First off, I marked where the holes needed to be drilled to mount the V slot rail and alloy angle. Next I marked where the holes needed to be drilled and threaded on the V-slot rail. With that done, I moved on to forming the angle alloy to fit around the edges of the base. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now I could mark where I wanted the hot wire to be mounted to the base. I decided to offset the wire slightly to the right hand side. Now I could assemble the base to the alloy angle and the V-slot rail. To electrically insulate one end of the hot wire from the chassis, I'll be using a piece of wood to hold one end of the hot wire. I'm using an M6 bolt to hold the hot wire. The bolt should be offset 3mm from the centre of the hole the hot wire passes through on the bed. Doing this means the wire will be centred in the hole when the wire is resting against the side of the bolt. I'll sandwich the hot wire between these two washers to firmly hold the wire in place. You should line up the middle of the washers with the centre of the hole like I'm doing here. With that done I can move on to making the arm that holds the hot wire above the bed. First I drilled an 8mm hole to mount the bar to the base. You can customise the height of the bar to whatever you need, however I'm going to make mine 200mm high. I wanted a nice soft radius bend. So I used a piece of 40mm pipe to form the bend. I bent the bar to approximately 80 degrees rather than a perfect right angle. This is because the bar is used to put tension on the night chrome wire to hold it tight. Once the bar has tension applied it will be corrected to a 90 degree bend. I used a square placed at the centre of the hole to mark where that hot wire should be mounted to the arm. I marked out a little bit extra length to allow for the bolt to hold the hot wire and then cut the bar to length. Next I bent the bar 90 degrees where the hot wire would be mounted. Using a square I verified the bend was in the correct spot for the hot wire to be held perfectly vertical.
Now I moved on to mounting the PWM controller using M3 brass standoffs. With that done I drilled holes for the adjustment knob, power switch, LED and DC connector. The resistor is soldered to one of the LED leads. After mounting the LED and power switch I was ready to mount the DC connector, only this is where I discovered a potential pitfall in my plan. You see, because I'm using a metal barrel socket, the chassis is connected to ground. Normally this wouldn't be an issue, however since I'm using the chassis for the ground output from the PWM controller, this setup won't work. To avoid this happening to you, I would recommend buying a plastic DC connector. However, since I don't have one lying around, the best alternative I had was to 3D print a custom washer set to insulate my connector from the chassis. With that issue sorted, I could finish wiring up the LED switch and power input to the PWM controller. The wiring is pretty self explanatory, however I'll include a wiring diagram to download in the video's description if anyone needs it. The positive output from the PWM controller is connected to the bolt using an eyelet crimp. The ground output from the PWM controller is connected to the chassis. Before switching it on, the last thing to do was to cut a length of nichrome wire and mount it using the wing nuts. The top bar is pulled down to add tension to the wire.
Before switching the power on, make sure you turn the power down to the lowest setting. Every type of foam will require different amounts of power to cut effectively. The easiest method I found was to gently rest the foam against the hot wire and slowly turn up the power until the wire passes through the foam with minimal effort. Right, now it's time to build the fence. Two V-slot nuts are installed into the rail. I purposely installed the nuts backwards because they allow for easier sliding this way. Next I cut two pieces of alloy angle to construct the fence. First I drilled two holes that match up with the V-slot nuts I installed earlier. I used a square to align the fence perpendicular to the bed. And now you're ready to slice and dice foam. Oh, and one last thing. Depending on what type of foam you're cutting, you may want to have a couple of different gauges of nichrome wire handy. For example, while the small 28 gauge wire cuts this type of foam easy, the same wire struggles to cut this high density foam. And you can see just how slow it is cutting this foam. This is where you might need a heavier gauge nichrome wire to speed up the cutting speed for dense foam. So that about wraps up for this video. Don't forget to check out the links in the video description for more details on some of the components I used. Plus there'll be some affiliate links down there if you want to help support content like this on my channel. Thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support making projects and videos like this possible. And I'll see everyone in the next video. Bye for now.